Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call the Thursday, September 14, 2023 meeting of the Board of Adjustment for the City of Bel Air Beach to order. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. <laughs> I'd like to ask Clerk County Gentry to please call the roll. Board Member Mark Bean. Here. Board Member Carol Conry. Present. Board Member Fred Elia. Present. Board Member David Gardella. Here. Board Member Tony Gatlin. Present. Vice Chair Jane Mason Goldman. Here. Chair Mike Kelly. Here. City Manager Kyle Leifler. Here. And alternate board members Mark Mariano and Gerald Wizawadi were unable to attend. Thank you, Patty. I'd like to ask for a, um, a motion regarding the last meeting that we had in May, May 11th, Board of Justice meeting. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor of the um, the minutes as, as reported, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry 7 up. At this time, I'm going to ask anybody in the audience that is going to speak tonight, even if you think you might and um, you're not sure if you want to, please stand up and be sworn in by our clerk. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, read the rules and procedures that we're going to follow tonight for everybody's benefit. There's actual procedures that we follow. There's a series of questions that we ask. So here's how it's going to take place. For each case that we have tonight, I will read the variance request. Then the city manager will give a staff report on behalf of the city. Then the applicant will be asked to come forward or their representative to the podium, pull the, pull the microphone down to make sure, that since we are recording this, that um, we can all hear you. And you are welcome to make your, your statement or your representative is, is also um, able to make that statement. At that point, we're going to have open discussion with the board and with the applicants. Followed by that, we actually vote on six different items for every case. The board will be asked to vote, and each of those items will be voted on individually by everybody up here. We will then ask for a vote regarding the variance itself. And then at that point, we'll do a roll call to see if the variance passes or if the variance fails. If there's any questions, you can stop me at any time. At this point, we'll go ahead and ask for variance request number 23-04 for the owners of 120 14th Street. And excuse me if I pronounce your name wrong, but I believe, is it Raul? And Mina Shukla? Yes. Shukla. Thank you very much. They're requesting a variance from Division 2 Swimming Pools, Section 10-7, regarding the setbacks, the heights, and the widths. The height of a swimming pool shall be no higher than 18 inches above the crown of the road. Any structural part of any permanently installed in-ground swimming pool or spa shall not be built higher than 24 inches above the deck, including raised spas, pool beams, upper level decks, and raised water plants. Auxiliary deck mounted equipment such as handrails, ladders, grab rails, diving boards, and slides shall not be subject to the height requirements set forth in this section. Their request is to construct a pool 62.64 inches above the maximum height allowed by the city code. Patty, have we received any correspondence at all for this case? I had one phone call inquiring if the pool was going to be in the front yard and the backyard, and that was their only question. Okay. Are any of the neighbors by chance of the applicant here this evening that would like to speak? I know you've got a representative from your pool 
construction company at this at this point. Um, I, I'd like to ask uh, Kyle now that I've read what they, they are requested to do. Kyle, you'll make a report on behalf of the city. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so our city engineer, Larry Flutie, with Gemini Engineering, prepared, uh, he reviewed the, the plans and prepared a, a letter um, stating what the uh, variance needs are. Um, he used uh, everything in the, in the measurements of feet. Uh, I'm going to say it in inches because our code reference is 18 inches. Um, it might be easier to understand that way. Um, so this is the property at 128 14th Street. They, they have an existing pool um, that is a higher elevation than is allowed by code. The crown of the road um, in front of the residence that the code references that is 22.2 inches. The existing pool deck now is at 86.4 inches. And this is inches above sea level. Um, and the proposed pool, uh, the plans that are included in this packet, um, is going is requesting to be at uh, 102.84 inches above sea level. Given the crown of the road being at 22.2 inches, uh, the maximum allowable by code uh, elevation a new pool is 40 inches, 40.2 inches above sea level. So the proposed pool uh, being at 102.84 inches above sea level, um, they need a variance to cover an additional 62.64 um, inches above what is allowed by code. So basically we're asking for something that's five feet higher and what we allow by roughly five feet two inches. Okay. Thank you. Kyle. Kyle. One question. On the eight and six inches, that's is that sea level or is that from the crown of the road? It's eight, the existing is eighty six point four inches above sea level. Above sea level. So we go ahead. Excuse me. The, the existing um, is forty six point two inches above what is allowed by code. So how much higher the, above the existing deck as it stands now that they're looking to go? They're looking to go an additional 16, um, four or nine inches above the current pool deck. 16 inches? 16 inches. Above the current pool deck? Yes. Okay, thank you, Bill. So the old one before the, the representative comes up, the old one as it gets torn out will be replaced by a higher pool? Yes. As, as proposed? As proposed, okay. Any other board members, any questions before we ask for the uh, owner's comments? Mr. You good? Okay. Thank you. you folks are welcome to make a, a statement if you like, or your representative is welcome to make a statement. Yes, sir. My name is Steve Geiger. I represent Cody Pools. Um, the biggest reason that we want to raise the pool to the height of the patio is the existing pool now has stairs. And it's more difficult for the homeowner to enter in and out of the house down to the existing pool that's there. So right now there's technically three steps from their existing house to the existing pool deck. So what we're asking for is to build the new pool to the height of the patio. I know that it already exceeds what the current code is, but the pool already does. So as he's saying, we're asking for another 16 inches more than what it is right now. And then as far as the footprint of the pool, the foot, the new footprint of the pool is smaller than what's actually existing there concrete wise. Some of the existing concrete is as close as three feet off of the seawall. Nowhere, anywhere with the new project would be any closer than, I think it's 11 or 10.9, somewhere in that range. So you didn't have to or you don't plan to alter the Tyfax? No, sir. And I have a letter that I turned in with the um, 
package that has a copy from my engineer on the seawall. Okay. So let me, do you have your pool plan in front of you with your elevations on it? I, I do, yes, sir. We're showing an actual finished elevation of the pool of 8.57. Yeah, the spa would be 9.57 and then the pool would be 8.57. Yes. Okay, so the spa is up another foot? Yes. And your pool deck um, will will finish as, as you'd like to have it finish at the 8.57 even with the, the covered porch? Yes, sir. Okay. Does everybody on the board understand that? You've got step downs all over the place once you flank the pool. Um, so that will take them down approximately, what is it, Steve, about four feet? On the back side, yes. Yeah, at the water level. Correct. Okay. Um, any other comments on your behalf? I, I think that makes it clear, yes, sir. I do have copies of the survey highlighting the existing pool and the proposed new pool along with pool construction drawings. If anybody would like to see it, I have all of that stuff. So you have a demolition contractor lined up? Yes, sir. Pending the approval of variance? That's all we're waiting on, yes, sir. Okay, have you applied at all yet for anything? When to we, Kyle? We, we did apply for the application and then we, this is as far as we've gotten, yes, sir. Okay. Again, any questions from um, board members. The um, on either side of the deck, this would be north and south, drops off, and then you're at the grade of the land, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Their intent is to put um, glass wall, you know, obviously for trip fall purposes, all the way around. That's going to get installed. Anybody in the audience want to speak on behalf of this case? Mr. Geiger, thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, board members, I'd like you to go ahead and take out our criteria sheet, and I'd like to ask our Vice Chairman, Jane Goldman, to go ahead and ask the questions on our behalf. We will be asking, ladies and gentlemen, six different questions for which you must receive um, uh, a yes vote to move forward with the with the variance. So number one, have you demonstrated that the special conditions or unique circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not applicable to other similar structures or buildings in the same zoning district? Did the requesters Need that. Approved is a yes and no is a deny. Patty? Mr. Beam? No. Ms. Connery? No. Mr. Elia? No. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatliff? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Pardon? Yes. That's three no votes and four yes votes. Number two. Number two. Demonstrated that the variance requested is the minimum variance that will make it possible for the reasonable use of the land building or structure. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? No. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elia? No. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Two no and five yes. Number three. 
Have they demonstrated that granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by this chapter? Yes equals approved. No equals denied. Mr. Bean? No. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elia? No. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlet? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Two no, five yes. Okay, number four. Have they demonstrated that the variance requested does not change the use of the property from the use characteristics mandated for districts one and two in sections 3051 and 94-252 and article four, division three of this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? No. Ms. Conry? Yes. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Elia? No. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Two no, five yes. Number five, Have they, will they comply fully with the additional conditions and safeguards which the Board of Adjustment may prescribe, including but not limited to reasonable time limits within which the action for this variance is required shall commence and or be completed? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? No. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Okay, number six. They demonstrated that the variance requested does not violate any provision and requirements set forth in Chapter 62 and Chapter 74 of the City Code. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? No. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elia? No. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Two no, five yes. I'd like to ask for a motion requesting the board to weigh in on, or vote, sorry, weigh in, or vote, please. I think we need a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the variance request, number 2304. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. I'm sorry, Ms. Goldman, who seconded? I couldn't tell. Thank Tony you. Tony Gatlin. Mr. Beam? No. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elia? No. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Two no, five yes. Folks, your variance is approved. Right. So we wish you the best. Steve, move forward with Kyle as soon as possible. Yes. And good luck going up to Clearwater to get your, your building permit for the town. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming. Uh, I just want to make this my heartiest thanks. Thank you very much. Good luck with your approval, sir. Welcome. The next variance request is number 2305. The address is 305 Harbor Drive. And the owners, again, I hope I pronounced it correctly, 
Demetra and Constantinos. Help me on this. I'm the last name. Stephanos. 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 Okay. The requesting of variance from Chapter 30, which is our marine structure chapter. Plans and specification regarding plans and specifications. The length of a residential dock shall not exceed 30 feet from a seawall or waterfront property line involved to allow an existing, your request is to allow an existing residential dock 31 feet farther from the seawall than allowed by code. At this point, Kyle, could you come on back up and give us a city report, staff report? Okay, thank you. This is for 305 Harbor Drive. Um, this very, uh, there's three variance requests, uh, and it's for an existing dock and boat lift. So it's required to have three variances from the code uh, to replace, what they're asking is to replace the existing boat lift with a new boat lift. And the reason that they need the variance um, is because the dock itself is longer than is permitted by code. The lift has Islands that are further out that are limited by code and the um, projection of the property line, it's closer than what is permitted by code. So, talking about the length of the dock, um, the existing dock is 61 feet from the seawall. Um, the code provides that the dock can be 30 feet from the seawall um, with an extension of a 15 foot catwalk. Um, the way the dock is designed, the dock is technically, um, the dock structure is 61 feet from the seawall, um, and that's on the existing dock, they're doing nothing to that dock, but they do need a variance because the lift is part of that dock. So they need a variance of an additional 31 feet from the seawall to keep the, the <coughs> existing dock. And then the next variance is a variance to allow the existing um, boat lift hoist to have uh, elements filings out at 69 feet from the seawall. The code provides that um, boat hoist shall not be extended farther than 45 feet from the seawall. So this would be 69, so they need a variance to extend the boat hoist um, an additional 24 feet from the seawall. And then the last variance is one dealing with the uh, property line projections and the way that the lot is shaped if you look at the parcel is it's kind of a, a pie piece getting skinnier towards the seawall so when you project out the property lines they kind of squeeze in um, this uh, but at the distance where the boat lift is um, which is the uh, 16 feet from the seawall um, you project those property lines out instead of being 12 feet away from that property line it is only nine feet away so they're asking for a variance to be three feet closer to that projected property line on the south side of the property um, and again that's no closer than what the existing um, situation is any questions from the board for Kyle? yeah right so I'm gonna understand, they're not replacing the dock, they're just replacing the four pylons and the 10,000 pound lift. Yes. In the exact location that it's currently at. Light for light. Okay, thank you. Kyle, is this because this is an ancient variance from a long time ago? Um, the dock, the original dock was built before uh, the current code was adopted. So is the code got more restrictive after the dock was installed. And to your knowledge, there, is there any interference to several of the board members that are all boaters, and David lives on that channel? Are we interfering whatsoever with that first 25% on uh, on this property? Um, do I have a computer for that reason?
Sun Harbor is right here. So where the parcel's highlighted, as you can see, it's open water right there across the channel there. So there's no interference. Can you zoom in a little bit? Here. Yeah, take it in. So the dock comes out and there's the existing waste or lift. And you can see all the property line projects this way. You can leave that on the screen if you will for a minute. David, any comments, Tony? No, I'm, I'm actually surprised it's even nine foot from that extended property line, the way that looks. So that's good. All right. Yeah. Well, they're not extending anything. It's exactly where it is now. That was my question. Thanks, Doug. So Kyle, the, the existing boat lift now is 9 feet from the property line on the south side? Yes. And are they asking to go further out? If you said it was 61 now, it's going to be 69 for the new one. Or is it going to be the same distance? So the dock um, right here where it ends is 61 feet. Yeah. And then the boat hoist is a little bit further as the way it exists now. So that's so the space going to be the exact same dock. It's going to be in the same place. place. And there's already docks on either side of that, but relatively the same, the same length. So, being the yes, there's other docks that are longer than the other. And one more question. So this was put in prior to a board of adjustment hearing when it was originally put in, right? Because they don't have variance from that. Correct. Okay, thank you. And the variances are all good for you, right? Yes. So, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, where it talks about um, the waste of it that is unique to this property, is it not going to be unique to other properties as time goes on? I'm looking at the, the info that they've explained why the place is needed. Um, the properties vary as you go along these, the seawalls, um, but definitely are some that have more prominent waste events and shallower water. I can't. Speak exactly to so what you want. Well, will these not continue to grow? I mean, will there be another barrier to you if it continues to grow? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Would the applicant or representative of the applicant care to come forward? Please introduce yourself and Pull the microphone down if you need so we can hear better. Okay. Thank you. Yes, hi. I'm Lisa Ryan with Advanced Sorting Construction, and I am here uh, representing uh, Ms. Dimitri and her husband. Um, we are proposing, as you have mentioned, to keep the existing dock and lift in the exact same position it's in right now, just to swap out the boat lift on new poles. Any questions or? Yeah. While this, while it's up on the screen, I, yes. You're sitting up behind us, or we're sitting in back over here. Mm -hmm. um, whether Kyle answers this or you answer this, David has lived on that canal for years and years. I lived down on Harbor Drive for 18 years, further north of where that house is. All of us as boaters are always concerned about shoals, and as you come around that corner, that's a, that's a tough one. I realize you're not going out any further, but Kyle, how far across is it to where you you come? Are you familiar familiar with that? Or David, you can probably chime in on this one. I, I, well, from where it starts getting shallow there on that picture, it's probably 60 feet, maybe 100 feet. I don't know. Are you saying from the dock to? Yeah, there's a natural channel that runs right. through. Right. Which is nice. So where it gets darker there. Yeah. It shoals in real bad on that right yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. And I did not measure that. No, I don't know that exactly. Okay. Well, the fact that it's existing is is helpful because to obviously get into greater percentage of that 25 percent that you're allowed um, when not venturing into that particular area. So in terms of hazards to navigation, guys, I guess we're not dealing with that. No. Well, the only thing, Mike, that I would say, since you guys live down there, mm -hmm. 
there any worry about moving out as far as they did at a low tide condition for safety and building somebody runs around? No, because the existing dock that's been there, we all avoided coming in because it, and it, it even starts one or two houses to the south. And uh, I think one or two, but not even in that in that shot. It's consistent. Right? Okay. okay. Thank you. At this point, we'll go ahead and, and do our questions for our uh, criteria worksheet. Jane, if you take over. Yeah. Um, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And um, you guys didn't swear me in, and I'm a lawyer, so you want to swear me in because I came in three minutes late. So. How do you got to swear you in? Sorry. Yeah. I just feel bad. It's like I feel like I'm lying or something. <laughs> uh, wait, this one. Yeah, that one. Do you solemnly declare or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in these proceedings is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. So um, I just wanted to say that um, we've owned it let's see, since before my first son was born. So um, it's real shallow out there. Right. And it would be, if you guys don't do this tonight, we'd deem it like, pretty much unusable. And we, as you know, we're not trying to change anything. We just want them to replace the, the lift so that we can use it. And it is, it's just really shallow. You guys know from being out there. So. And then we do, it's a nice thing is we do have that nice channel out there. So I don't think we're bothering anybody any more than anybody else is out there. We're trying our best. So Neither one of us is running your duck. Not yet. So. Keep our fingers crossed, guys, because we can't even rebuild it after that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Change yours. Okay, so variance requests, we're going to start with 23-05. The first question is, have, have they demonstrated that special conditions or unique circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not applicable to other similar structures or buildings in the same zone and district? Yes equals the variance is approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Aye. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Number two, uh, they demonstrated that the variance requested is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Yes, variance approved. No variance denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. No, question number three. Have they demonstrated that granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number five. Will you comply fully with additional conditions and safeguards which the Board of Adjustment may prescribe, including but not limited to reasonable time limits within which the action for the variance is required shall commence and are be completed. Yes, the variance is approved. No, it's not approved. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. And um, Ms. Goldman? I skipped question four. Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry. Question number four was, did they demonstrate that the variance requested does not change the use of the property from the use characteristics mandated for districts one and two in sections 30-51 and 94-252 in article four, division three of this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number six. 
They demonstrated that the variance requested does not violate any provision and requirements set forth in Chapter 62 and Chapter 74 of the City Code. Yes equals uh, variance approved. No equals variance denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. So we need a motion. Motion to approve. Right. Second. Would somebody like to make the motion? I make a motion and make it. It's approved. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can I get the motion in a second? Was that Ms. Connery was motion? And Mark being was and Mark second. was second. Thank yes. you. It's for member 2305. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Variance number 2305 is approved. We're coming to part two. Okay. We've got three to go. We've got to do this again twice. We know the show's not too terrific, but we've got to do it again. So, so bear with us. That's right. <laughs> Variance request 23-06. First question is, have they demonstrated that special conditions or unique circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure and building involved and which are not applicable to other similar structures or buildings in the same zoning district? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number two. Have they demonstrated that the variance requested is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure? Yes. Variance approved. No. Variance denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number three. Have they demonstrated that granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by this chapter? Yes equals approved. No equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number four. Have they demonstrated that the variance requested does not change the use of the property from the use characteristics mandated for districts one and two in sections 30-51 and 94-252 in article four, division three of this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number five. Will they comply fully with the additional conditions and safeguards which the Board of Adjustment may prescribe, including but not limited to reasonable time limits within which the action for which a variance is required shall commence and or be completed. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Mr. Con Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number six. Have they demonstrated that the variance requested does not violate any provision and requirements set forth in Chapter 62 and Chapter 74 of the City Code? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. We'd like to make a, have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve variance request 2306. Second. And is there any way we can always make another motion just to approve everything for 2307? No, sir. Uh, 
That's fine. Okay, I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Okay, variance request 23-07. Question number one, have they demonstrated that special conditions or unique circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or buildings involved which are not applicable to other similar structures or buildings in the same zoning district? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number two, have they demonstrated that the variance requested is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Ms. Mr. Elliott? Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number three, have they demonstrated that granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Question number four, have they demonstrated that the variance requested does not change the use of the property from the use characteristics mandated for districts one and two in sections 30-51 and 94-252 and article four, division three of this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatliff? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. yes. Question number five. Will you comply fully with additional conditions and safeguards which the Board of Adjustment may prescribe, including but not limited to reasonable time limits within which the action force which a variance is required shall commence and or be completed. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Coward? Yes. Seven yes. Yes. Number six. They demonstrated that the variance requested does not violate any provision and requirements set forth in Chapter 62 and Chapter 74 of the City Code. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. So I would like to make a motion that the variance is um, approved. So, we have a motion by Mr. Goldman and we have Mr. Gardello or Mr. Bean for a second. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Lisa and Demetra, um, thank you for your patience on this. Only three variances are approved. You're welcome to move forward with, with Kyle and our permit procedure. And again, water navigation up in Clearwater, and we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kyle. Okay, that moves us on to our third variance request of the night at 907 Harbor Drive. It is very, we have two variances coming up for number 23-08 to construct a dock to encroach 25 feet farther into the navigable waterway that allowed by city code. 
Mr. Brown, I presume this is yours. Okay. Um, the second variance rule here is 23-09, same address, requesting a catwalk. Construction dock and catwalk, 15 further along, 15 further out, 15 further longer than the allowed by city code. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, so this is at 907 Harbor Drive. And it's requesting two variances. Um, the first variance uh, is uh, addressing the 25% um, encroachment, more than 25% into the navigable waterway. Uh, the engineer looked at the plans, looked at the aerial so that is minus seven R. And when the engineer calculated the navigable waterway, you got a distance of 140 feet. Um, that distance he calculated from the land to the Bird Island is 140 feet. Um, he just, his explanation when I asked was he wanted to make sure he checked all the boxes of what could be um, interpreted <coughs> as an animal waterway. As you can see, it's you know a couple, probably three, four hundred feet off of Bird Island to the north of the property. Um, but that is how he determined that they need a variance of um, an additional 25 feet uh, because he calculated that 25% of 140 is 35 feet and then the dock itself with the catwalk extends out 60 feet so there'd be a variance of 25 feet further. Okay. But it's fairly open water right off Mr. Brown's dock. Yes, I just wanted to point it out. Um, and then, when it comes to the plans for the dock, he has an existing dock that you can see. Uh, he currently has a lift at the east end of it. But what his plans call for is extending the catwalk off the end of this existing 30 feet to get out deep enough to put the lift for the boat to be. Um, so our code allows you to construct the main dock 30 feet from the seawall, and then um, you're allowed 15 additional feet from the dock, uh, as long as it's four feet or less in width of a catwalk. Um, that is not enough. He's proposing doing an additional 15 feet from the dock, so it'd be 30 feet of catwalk um, to extend the, the lifts out. So again, that's a variance of 15 feet longer than a lot of the code. Any questions from the board? How long is the dock out now, Kyle? I mean, the, the, the farthest island there is more than that lift. Is that 45 feet? The dock, I know, is 30. And it looks like it would be under a very So means the dock for it itself goes out. Um, it has like a, a dock that runs uh, parallel to the seawall um, that is four feet from the seawall and then from there, so this is four feet and then it goes another 26 feet to the end. So that's the 30. And um, I mean, judging by this, if you just look, if this is about halfway, it looks like the lift doesn't go, probably goes out right at four feet. I don't have the existing plans. It's fine. And we're looking for another 15 feet past that point. Yes. Okay, 
So they're confirming that the lift is within that 45 feet from the seawall. Things are safe. Before Kyle sits down, any questions anywhere? Now, can you just pull, push it in a little bit so I can see the navigable water on the side there? Just a little bit. You don't have to go. Thank God. You come in even more just so you can see what's going on in the right there. Okay, okay that's perfect. And then this, this is part of the parcel. They actually have some submerged land. So this cutting in like this doesn't apply to the distance of the dock off the property line because the way the code reads is it's projected out like this. Okay. So on the second variance, we're not really worried about the nine feet. Where the property line and the nine foot is, is determined. So it's you're fine. saying we do have the 12. Yeah. They do have the 12. OK. Uh, thank you, Kyle. Okay. Mr. Brown, Mrs. Ryan, would either of you care to come up? Hi, thank you. My name is Scott Brown. Uh, we purchased the home in the middle of February. I've been trying to work on uh, a suitable plan since then. The issue is that the the water around the dock and at the end of the home there is very, very shallow. It becomes dry land, completely dry land, about 20 foot off the seawall uh, in low tide. <clears throat> There's also an abundance of seagrass in that area. So I had originally looked at trying to move some of the sand out of the way and create some depth. Dredge it. And dredge it, but the, but the county uh, spoke of concerns because of the seagrass in the area and so they would prefer us to give a variance for length so so that's why we're uh, asking for this variance uh, the property the navigable waterway there uh, there's, there's really two that are directly behind the home there's there's an east west navigable waterway that runs all the way out to the main channel uh, in the harbor and then there's the north-south that everybody's familiar with runs right next to here. <clears throat> so that area is extremely wide uh, in terms of navigable waterway out there. There's, there's my estimate and measurement uh, was in excess of 400 feet from the seawall behind my house. So there's, there's a lot of water back there uh, that's deep and navigable. Uh, and, and as Kyle mentioned, the, the navigable waterway that the engineer spoke of was to the island, but the island is nowhere near my property. It's several hundred feet to the south. Um, so we, we really are just looking so that we can use the dock in low tide uh, and even mid tide. Preferably, we would have a request of 25 feet to, to ensure that we could use the lift at all tide levels, but the, the variance application asked us for the minimum, so that's why we are seeking 15. It will probably prevent me at some points in time with extreme low tides from using the lift, uh, but I think that's a pretty rare occasion, and so that's why we're requesting 15 feet, so we're trying to, to be as reasonable uh, and keep it as short as we can uh, from that. Uh, and I just also want to note that in our application, our neighbors have reviewed the plans and approved uh, the plans and agree with those. Mr. Brown, you are correct. This, this board looks very um, realistically what the minimum request, the variance request is. Um, that, that's very fair. If you need the 15 feet, that's, that's what we'll consider. Some people have shot for the moon and, and the whole variance goes down. Right. So your application is commendable. Thank you, I appreciate that. I, I also just want to uh, introduce as well, John McKenna, who is an environmental consultant that I hired with Florida Permitting. And uh, Florida Permitting has been around for 34 years in the area. And so I hired them to advise me with regard to the seagrass and, and what would be acceptable. Mr. McKenna, thank you, very thorough, thorough letter. These kind of reports definitely help the board. Any other questions for Mr. Brown or Mr. McKenna? Or Ms. Ryan, they're there too. <laughs> Any board members, any questions? 
Thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice Chairman. You can take it. Okay, here we go. This is Mr. Brown's variance request number 23-08. The first question is, has he demonstrated that special conditions or unique circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved? which are not applicable to other similar structures or buildings in the same zone in the district. Yes, it was approved. No, it equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Pardon? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number two, they demonstrated that the variance requested is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Yes, equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Alia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatliff? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven, yes. Question number three. Have they demonstrated that granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number four, has the applicant de demonstrated that the variance requested does not change the use of the property from the use characteristics mandated for districts one and two in sections 30-51 and 94-252 in article four, division three of this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Conry? Yes. Mr. Elia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatliff? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number five. Will you comply fully with additional conditions and safeguards which the Board of Adjustment may prescribe, including but not limited to reasonable time limits within which the action for a variance is required shall commence and or be completed. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number six. They demonstrated that the variance requested does not violate any provision and requirements set forth in Chapter 62 and Chapter 74 of the City Code. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elia? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. I move that we approve this request for a variance. Second. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gordella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. So variance 23-08, the first of two, that enables you to encroach 25 feet further into the Navajo waterway is approved. We'll move on to 23-09. Okay, 23-09. Number one, uh, they demonstrated that the special conditions or unique circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land structure or building involved and which are not applicable to other similar structures or buildings in the same district. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. 
Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatliff? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number two, they demonstrated that the variance requested is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Bean? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? Yes. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Seven yes. Have you demonstrated that, question number three, have you demonstrated that granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege which is denied by this chapter? Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number four. They demonstrated that the variance requested does not change the use of the property from the use characteristics mandated for districts one and two in sections 30-51 and 94-252 and article four, division three of this chapter. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? <coughs> yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number five, we, you comply fully with additional conditions and safeguards which the Board of Adjustment may prescribe, including but not limited to, reasonable time limits within which the action for this variance is required shall commence and or be completed. Yes equals approved, no equals denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Question number six. Have they demonstrated that the variance requested does not violate any provision and requirements set forth in Chapter 62 and Chapter 74 of the City Code? Yes equals approved, no equals variance denied. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Okay, I would like to make a motion that we approve this variance number 2309. Second. Mr. Beam? Yes. Ms. Connery? Yes. Mr. Elliott? Yes. Mr. Gardella? No. Mr. Gatlin? Yes. Ms. Goldman? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. One no, six yes. Mr. Brown, congratulations. You've got your variances. You move forward and uh, deal with the water and nav and go from there. Mr. McKenna, while you're here, we're going to pick your brain. Would you please go to the podium for a couple questions that will help not only our board members, but our city manager. Because the, the, uh, your letter is terrific, and in the past, this city has had to deal with uh, maintenance dredges. Sure. Uh, on a city level, um, this is where I show my age, we actually had a sandbar out here past Mr. Brown's area that David, you remember, showed in so bad that we approached the Army Corps of Engineers for approval and they were dragging their feet. And we started going to legislatures because all we wanted was a maintenance dredge. We had clean fill. We, we checked all the boxes and the Corps of Engineers said no. Um, at that point we said, because when it showed in, the currents blowing under the bridge, blowing north, we're, I don't know, Kyle, can you pull that down? We'll even show the bridge to where um, John can get a better shot out of it. 
Because it's the, the, the sandbar is still there, David, isn't it? Yeah, it comes out. Yeah. Sure it's dangerous. You can see how narrow it gets, John. And that's where the currents start ripping. A lot of <clears throat> non residents were fishing on the sandbar. Um, and we actually said, what's it going to take for, for us to be able to, to get this approved? Pinellas County agreed they would do it. Where our land is outside here, we were willing to put the fill <coughs> there and, and have it all the way at no charge to the city. Kyle, you may have heard a little bit about this, but this, this got to be quite an issue. And ironically, a man who was fishing there over Labor Day weekend in 2003 or four, I can't remember, drowned. He, he, he slid off the, um, off the uh, sandbar. Um, his body was found just north of the bridge. Um, I got a call from the police chief at the time because I happened to be mayor. And he said, you have to do an interview with Channel 13. We just lost the person who drowned because of that sandbar. You'd be amazed how fast the Army Corps of Engineers gave us the approval for a maintenance dredge. <clears throat> Can you kind of explain what a maintenance dredge is? Because I know Mr. Brown had to encounter it too. Sure, sure. Um, a maintenance dredge, uh, the state of Florida has their own definition of it. Uh, Dallas County has a similar definition. Army Corps of Engineers also has their own definition. Um, but essentially, it's any navigable channel boat basin, um, uh, mooring area, anything that was dredged essentially artificially. And normally the way that we determine that when we're putting our permits together is going back to historical aerials. Um, you know, if we can go back to the 50s, 60s, even the 40s and show that something was dredged, then it's easily made a stretch. Um, the other caveat is for the state, if an area fills in to the point where it's no longer navigable, they will not consider that maintenance. Then it's essentially a new dredge. Because I can't say that was our first maintenance dredge, um, but it had gotten to the point where it was dangerous for even a boater to try to get through there, kayaks to get through there, because the currents were ripping. Um, Mr. Brown, the current's still bad going through there? I it's don't pretty strong, it. yes. Sir? It's pretty strong through there, yes. So because you have seagrass, does that virtually wipe them out from doing it? Yes, it was partially seagrass and partially because the Mr. Scott's or Mr. Brown's mooring area was never dredged itself. The adjacent north-south channel was. Um, and Pinellas County, for private citizens, will not allow new dredging. Uh, they would only allow maintenance dredging. Um, and then on the state and federal side, and yes, they were concerned about the sea grasses. Um, and they, the state may possibly have permitted it with some mitigation, uh, but the Army Corps of Engineers most likely would not have permitted it. We, we had gone through about six months of denials so that must have been our initial request for maintenance trip. Uh Yes, and then did they issue the city maintenance dredge eventually? They sure did. Yes. Okay. Well, now that you have it, it should be easier to get in the future from the agencies. Kyle, would this be our second one, or has it been? I don't think there's been one since that, that initial one in 2002 or three. I don't know anyone since then, but um, I'm very well lucky to. Mark, yeah. any idea? We, we haven't had a great sense The key to why the county agreed to do it, basically for free, we gave them a um, staging area for the, for the fill. It was right outside here, just south of the bridge where now is the gazebo or <coughs> slab up there. Um, so the county was thrilled with that. Um, I think Army Corps of Engineers um, did it because somebody died. Um, and it took that, of course, it was on television, and legislators were all over um, the, the Army Corps of Engineers, et cetera, et cetera. So the county ultimately, after it dried out, all the fill was here for two weeks, or three weeks, all that water ran out, they hauled it away. Um, which gave us some new life for that channel that is now choking again. 
So I, I, I bring this up because your letter um, highlighted maintenance dredge as what Mr. Brown could have possibly done, but um, didn't have to based on our action plan. So just one more thing, though. You um, indicated in your letter that the there's precedents that already, that other people have already got their docks way past the code. Yes, there are some docks down to the south that looking back through the aerials in our measurements look like they were they were further out. Okay. Tony, you guys some neighbors have been dressed too, haven't you? Up on the uh, no, no we haven't. Not that not since I've been in there, no. Hey, did I misunderstand you? But did you say that um, Pinellas County will not issue a, a dredge for private citizens. They will not issue any new dredging areas. Um, if, it's, if it's an existing channel or boat basin, they will issue a, a maintenance dredge permit. Uh, but if that area has never been dredged before, um, uh, Connor Petrin with Pinellas County Water Navigation, which who I spoke with, um, and he indicated that in very rare circumstances, if you can show that you're providing a public benefit of some sort, they would allow new dredging. But he also said that was essentially limited to public piers, docks, fill ramps. It would be very difficult, he said, to, for a private uh, citizen to do that. So in Mr. Brown's case, if he did not have the seagrass and he needed to dredge it, the county would not, and he never had it dredged in the past, the county would not issue him a permit to dredge it. Correct, correct, because it was never dredged. Kyle, have any citizens approached you lately for a maintenance dredge? I haven't seen a dredge come through permanently over a year. I know Fred and Tony have got a neighbor um, up close to the corner of, of uh, Alita, I guess up on um, Donato and Alita, one or two back, um, where it showed in so bad, John. Um, yeah, they've got beaches behind their house. Yeah, 40 feet of beach. Interested enough, your old house, okay, which is my neighbor, right? He had a dredge done within the last year and a half. Did he really? For his cat, he's got a 45 foot catamaran out there. And he uh, applied for a dredging permit. I don't know what he had to do to get it. I don't think he had any seagrass issues for where he was at. But he just did a dredge it out within the last year, right next door. Did they have to bring a barge? No, they, they pumped it out and pumped it to a truck there at the street. Uh, uh, specifically for his boat that's there, he took three or four feet out of it. Yeah. But that means he must have had a maintenance dredge in the past. Correct, yes. Yeah, it was probably an excavated slip at, at some point. Right. We're dealing with some residents who need it real bad, and it's going <clears> to <throat> drop a car's lap. Yeah, we've, uh, you know, the last two or three years, we've done a lot of permitting for that type, um, mostly in Manatee County, but it's uh, it has become a very popular thing everywhere. Kyle, well, then, obviously, if they have a dredge, it's not like they have to come before us for variance, and they do that. It wouldn't need to be. Not, not Unless they were denied by water navigation. Yes. That's how do you get along with people in Clearwater? <laughs> Sometimes. Then we may see more of it. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions, John? Thank you very much for your information. Sure, thank you all. Um, thank you. Well, entertain a motion to adjourn if there's no further business before the board. I move that we adjourn. I second. Mr. Gatliff, Mr. Elliott, we adjourned.